This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And Ben Marowin? And today's guest, we've got the warrior monk. Chris, how are we? Yeah, very good, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And uh, obviously, I think you've been just looking at your stuff and looking really good out good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. You're a man on a mission. You you are involved in the Gurkhas, is that correct? Yeah. I don't know too much about them, but we'll touch on it. Um, yeah. I think there was 20,000 applied to go onto it, and they only choose over 100, is that correct? That's right, yeah. yeah. My knowledge, brother. Yeah. Thanks, mate. It's a... Uh, and then you went to the SES. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, like, you've done, you've travelled the world, um, you've been on top of Everest, motivational, you help other veterans. I think you've took people with no legs and yeah. the people who struggle with PTSD and mental health on, on these mad adventures, but it's, that's what it's all about. That's where they'll feel their peace and probably more alive. It's unbelievable what you're doing and this is my kind of story because these ones can help people. These ones people get they get some fire, they get some something that goes, okay, I can do something more. This is what it's all about. But first and foremost, how are you, brother? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, yeah, like again, uh, yeah, I think life is life. Yeah, situation everywhere. You know, every day, you know, a situation that day we come out from flat to the everywhere, wherever we go. I think, listen for me, is with that uh, situation, either we can become wiser and, you know, like collect ourselves and move on or we just hammered and then get down, I think. That's yeah. two choices we got in life. Before we get into everything, though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests. Yeah. Get more of a bit of understanding about you, Chris. Where you grew up, how it all began? Yeah, so I was born in Nepal about 2,000 meters uh, nearby, obviously, Himalayas um, in the lap of a uh, mountain, actually born in jungle. Because obviously when I born, there was no such thing, you know, electricity or, you know, no cars, no motor, never, never seen. And very obviously Nepal is the landlocked country between China and India. And we also got the, you know, world highest mountain, Mount Everest in the world and the birthplace of uh, Buddha, you know, uh, and also the, the warrior, the fighters, Gurkhas. So yeah, that's where I born and... Uh, grown up very ritual uh, because uh, our tribe uh, is whenever we became the eldest son, straight away we have no choice. We have to carry on the worshiping, you know, especially our, we, we grown up worshiping the nature, you know, the sky, sun, moon, every day, my cold hours, you know, and being a me, being an eldest son. So that's kind of my uh, grown up, you know, until, you know, I don't know, maybe age four to the before I joined the Gurkha. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's kind of my uh, life of you know youngs in in the mountain. Yeah. See now, obviously with technology, yeah. uh, kids in schools, everybody looking at screens, including myself, I'm bad for it. But see then, where you were grow up, 
Like it probably is, maybe people see that as poverty, but now looking at it, that's life. Yeah. Outside, nature, yeah. sun, grounding, just everything that kids should be is free yeah. and not locked up in a system. School for me is like a prison. Listen, you've got to learn maybe how to read and write and I get it. Yeah. But there's so much more to a system and, and fixing this to see the world in a better place the way it is. So when you grew up, did you not know any different where you were com- compared to kids in Westernized society? I have no idea, man. No ideas. Uh, nothing about, you know, because like you say, it's we, we human being recognized and, and you know, like... Uh, and uh, judgment with our ignorance, what we don't know and what we, you know, are not aware of. So I no, I have no idea about the Western world. Like I say, I used to, when I grown up, I used to look up in the sky and see, you know, like the silver line flying the plane. I used to ask my poor mom, like, oh, what is that stuff flying on the sky? She would have no clue. And neither I, you know, that's kind of the, you know, grown up I had. Mm-hmm. What's the population of Nepal? It's about uh, thirty million, thirty million, uh, yeah, population. And the, the obviously Nepal is like I say, it's a uh, significantly three different, like very high up in a mountain nearby the Himalayas, and there is called the foothill, or you know, like very hilly and green. And then we go to the border to the India, flat, you know, like like a desert. So that's very vast. Mm. You know, in terms of uh, geographic as well. What about education? Was there schooling? Was there education in Nepal there? Yeah. Education was still very poor. So only they, they said about about ninety percent is you know educated in in terms of modern intellectual academic education. How much percent? Um, uh, less than ninety percent. Less than ninety percent. Yeah. So basically, pretty much none. Mm-hmm. So, like I say, in my even my days, I actually grown up with nil education. You know, like no such as such academic education. Yeah. Having said that, we do do you know had this you know spiritual and understanding the you know like culture and society things that's kind of different kind of education, but not such like in understanding the front you know mm-hmm. A B C D or English like that. Yeah. Is it Buddhism in Nepal? What's the your sort of beliefs and religions there? So we, yes, so it's Hindus and Buddhists is still the main character dominant, but the Kuro is still our, up in the Himalayas, I was still very dominant from the Samanism. I don't know you heard about Sam. Sa- Saman is the nature in, in direct translation. And, you know, like oh, maybe over a thousand years ago, and when the, our ancestor found out everything who we are is part of nature. And they start, you know, then that became, you know, kind of, you know, practice and being with the nature. And also, you know, whenever we grow crops or field and farming and everything is related with the nature and season and, you know, then disaster come with either with the nature. I think that's my belief is that then they start understanding and how, how when it's going to rain, when it's going to sun that have a direct impact on on the way we're living. So yeah, so that's uh, that's how it is. Did you have a big family? Yes, in fact, actually, that is very interesting. You know, uh, my I still got five different family in the same roof. Yet today, now, so I got my mom and dad, my families, my brother families. I got two brother and then one sister, and everyone is married. Everybody's kid is still. Maybe twenty of us living in the same same house. How many bedrooms? Uh, we just keep increasing my on the side, because <laughs> it's just it's just you know like Himalayas. There's you know you know there's no such thing like here like you know flat. You yeah. know we just build. It's very easy built to be honest. You know like just had a you know couple of stone and mud, and if you need to just cut the tree you know with the with yeah. the hook and then put the bed on it. You know that's very easily done. Mm-hmm. Just so yeah, it's still. Yeah, we still got, you know, just increase the size. <laughs> That's amazing, though, because for me, as I'm getting older and what I'm trying to understand more of life is, is family is key. I believe it should all be tribes. I believe it should be, everybody should be tribalism, but I think everybody's more disconnected. Yeah. And it's like everybody's full of hate and rage because they're divided. Like if you've got your own little tribe and it's family and it's friends, 
There's not much arguments. There's not much. I feel as if outside noise and other influences can damage your yeah. brain. Yeah. This is just what I'm trying to learn and try to understand to try and not just teach myself, but other people. I don't have it all figured out, but I'm trying to find some sort of patterns, what works. Yeah. And I, I genuinely don't know. I just see a lot of, there's a lot of beautiful things in the world. There's also a lot of anger, a lot of yeah. frustration, yeah. but yeah, it is what it is. Is that what you are born into as family life? Um, help each other women housewives yep. cook clean men are out providing and protecting the old school way absolutely I think to be honest as much as we like you know try to you know evolving as a human being but actually we we're going against our DNA you know a uh, thousand years ago our DNA was like maybe still in cave and they, we protect and woman, still Nepal is a one country. We worship the woman as a god, you know. As a man, we have to protect. It's not. It's not against you know like the modern whatever we believe. But it's this is as a DNA. This is what we born for. This is what we evolving. And the you know like key is that the how can we of course you know uh, evolve. But for me, it's, I think it's very important for us to understand the modern science, you know, for modern AI, but also as much, even much more important for us to connect with the nature and connect with our ancestor. Because the, in, 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 in Eastern philosophy, we massively believe in reincarnation. The reason is that either we like or not, you know, your then generation of your grand-grandparents' eyes and hair and skin color is exactly the same. It's nothing different. And then we yet again we, we think in our, you know, like intellectual mind, or oh, pretty much we got nothing to do with our past. You know, we, we are so much driven, you know, whatever our frontal code loaded and we want to go there, we want to go there. Almost we never connect our subconscious and who we are. I think it's for us is to it's very important the love and emotion part is is if the same skin and everything is whatever I had ten generations with me and same color, then how how can we not to say, Oh, I got that DNA and you know, evolving of genetic and biology within me by only understanding and the you know reinvigorate of that energy within us, I think we can feel and you know, being a peaceful of course yet again has to learn the way the modern world we are living is very important for us to survive in this community as well. I think what I'm saying is that it's also important for us to understand who we are and who we were yeah. and have that faith and, and have that, you know, awareness within us. Yeah, I'm the same. Like for me those two agendas like is to go back to the source. Yeah. And if, that's it. And for me the women are the center of the universe. Women Absolutely. the the world revolves around yeah. women. The way they can give birth, the way they their body changes, yep. their energy changes, the way they can grow another human inside them. Yep. Like it's unbelievable. Yeah. Men and women need each other. Yeah. There's just a lot of confusion now. Yeah. Masculine energy yeah, yeah. and feminine yeah. energy. For me, we have both. Absolutely. Men are very fragile. If the suicide rate's the highest and men, why? Because there's something disconnected there. Yeah. There's something not right. So Women can talk about their problems, but for me, women are the centre. I think men need to understand that, that we need each other. It's not a case of telling your women what to do and be obedient. And That's bullshit. We both need each other. When the men come home from a hard day of work, they need the love, they need the understanding and nurturing the, that great feminine energy to then everything's going to be okay. Men just crave respect. If a woman respects a yeah. man, they'll give you the world. But if they don't feel respected, I feel as if a lot of women don't respect themselves anymore. There's a lot of tits and arse online. Listen, I look at it as well, and it's it's just a natural thing for a man. But if women covered up and had more respect, I feel as if... And men as well don't respect herself anymore. Too much drink, too much drugs, too much hiding, too yeah. much pain, too much sleeping around. And yeah. that's the way the world is designed as well. You can do good or bad, but it's just, I think, lack of knowledge for what's right and what's wrong. And I think more people are waking up to it what's more harmful to them then yeah. Uh, yeah it's just mad that life itself like I say sometimes I can overthink it all yeah. without actually living but 
I just know something's not right sometimes. And yeah, so let's talk about the Gurkha. How does that then come about? So for anybody that doesn't know, what is the Gurkhas? So Gurkha is the, obviously, uh, the actually word in Sanskrit, you know, in the proper, one, one of the oldest languages is mm-hmm. called Sanskrit. And is Go is a, a land and Kha is a protector. Those who protect the land or the love is called the Gurkha in, in, a, in a real meaningful Sanskrit language. But then the when Nepal, uh, you know, like uh, in maybe a couple of hundred years ago, you know, they, they fought and make a big country, Nepal, and it's the king was from Gurkha, the land Gurkha. And when in uh, 1912 or 19, that 1912 to 16, when the British start invading, the in, you know, India and start going to the Nepal, oh, this is a beautiful mountain, we, we go and, you know, like capture them. And then obviously there is a Gurkha people like us, and then the British were so impressed by them they couldn't overrun this small boys from mountain, and they look at these guys are tough. And then what the British uh, army that done is like, oh, why don't we became friendship? You know, there is just a mountain, maybe not not much to explore there, and we became friend. And then then they had a treaty, you know, like okay, we don't gonna go and you know fight against you but we bliss became friend and then then start serving the British army under still in India. So that's kind of nineteen fifteen, sixteen then he started Popper, all the Gurkhas from Mountain started working uh, you know, like that is actually two hundred more than two hundred ten years now. Working from there and in over the period and when the uh you know India start independent with the British, you know, then they said like and then they said, like, oh, because Gurkhas, we, we've been on the war, in the First World War, Second World War by then, and they said, so impressed, right? We're going to take with us, even though we're leaving the India, we're going to go with the Gurkhas and still keep them serving us. So that is how we started, you know, serving, like, more than 200 years ago. Uh, yeah, it's still, you know, still going. It's probably one of the strongest relationship, you know, unconditional relationship in the world that with, uh, you know, Nepal and uh, Great Britain. And that's how we started our journey more than a couple of hundred years ago. Great Britain, they've invaded <laughs> fucking over 90% of the ruthless bastards. <laughs> it's, uh, it's mad, though, that how people want to conquer the world. What do you think that is? Like your Hitlers in Britain, they always want to... There's always a ruler behind it that wants to conquer everything. Yeah. Do you think that's just natural in a man, or do you think that's just psychotic to then want to be... A conqueror because we all want to conquer something, yeah. but it's just when you harm other human beings, yeah. especially women or children, that's a different ball game. Yeah, if men sign up for battle, I believe if you learn some sort of combat sport, I believe you do feel like a man. I do believe something internal, yeah, doesn't make you as angry towards the world because you know how to handle yourself. I think, yeah, it's I, I think the majority of men can't fight, and I think they think they're 4,000 percent better a fighter yeah. than they actually are then that's a that's a yeah. big percentage the majority of people can't fight a lot majority of people are quite angry but combat it's just an act we are animals but for conquerors and to be to try and conquer the world what do you think that is from some rulers i think uh, as a like you know like thousand years of human evolution and uh especially men you know uh so we we evolve and we want to extend our you know our identity. So basically, what they found is the every thought, every emotion, every energy that man produce within us is to protect who we are. If anything danger or not the way we want it, we men fight for it. You know this is the you know like. DNA. That's the way we evolve. Then sometime, you know, that's then then what we call is the realization mind and the sensation mind. The our sense, the way we five sensation is always wanted to more, always wanted to, you know, capture more and create our boundaries and have the control. That's how because we have no choice because this is how we evolve. But then when we realize, you know, once we actually realize like we're talking, is that, oh, you know, is that a good thing? Can we 
do a little bit more meditation on it or can we do a lot more, you know, like study on it, then that's where our senses and mind start suppressing and our knowledge or, you know, thoughtful mind start have a control over. I think when, as a man, for me, we always need to have a discipline, you know, always need to know our boundaries because once that is, once once we have a lot more power and once we have a lot more influence but we don't know what we actually, you know, our future, our purpose, then we might sometimes go off the tangent, you know, then I want more and more and more, keep going and eventually it's going to collapse anyway. That's how, you know, you know, like thousand years of evolution of the us and human ever since. See, I think for me that's why... Um, being a Gurkha, you know, that's for me is teach me that the discipline is like, uh, you know, let's say we're driving in the highway. You know, if I want to drive from London to Glasgow, I can only be there in Glasgow safe if I follow the traffic rules. You know, if I stick in the my highway lane and, you know, rules and regulation. Otherwise, if I'm not sticking and following the rules, you know, I will be crashing and I will be, you know, going somewhere else. I think for me, it's like that also, whatever we want to achieve in our aim or concur or create the boundaries on on more, yet again, I think very important to stick and find the, you know, rules and regulations. It's like, like a discipline and dedication and devotion is so important that the uh, you know, if we don't have, then we end up going more and more and more, we start conquering the world, but eventually that yes. doesn't going to go long, I guess. What made you want to become a Gurkha? Yeah, thank you, because the my grandfather uh, was Gurkha, but we lost him in Second World War, so I didn't actually see him. But the boy from Nepal, um, uh, pretty much every single boy, is to join the Gurkha, became a Gurkha. And my grandfather, we lost him. And my father tried more than maybe six years to be a Gurkha. And he couldn't because he's, uh, he, uh, being a Gurkha is quite tough. You know, you need to be like physically and and medically. And, you know, also quite, you know, like I say, in my time, more than 20,000 tried to join, only over 100 passed. It's quite tough selection. Bit of luck as well, you know, in our life. But he been, he couldn't join after several years. And before I even born, my parents had a dream, me to be a Kirk. So almost like I, you know, I had no choice. You know, I had no choice because I, I've been dreamt my parents. And when I start realizing, even though I had grown up of a spiritual, you know, understanding and worshiping nature, but also in my mind, it's also it's, it's like idol, you know. For young kids, when my my uncle was a Gurkha, and whenever he came from UK or Hong Kong, we used to look at me like, wow, you know, I want to be like that. You know, you're strong, you know, physique and strong, and you know, walking around, and you got money, you know, then you are successful so many ways, and you can. And also for us is to protect our family. And friends is so important. It's core of our value with, with the culture we grown up, and I can look after my parents. You know, that's the reason I I being me being a Gurkhas. Then I managed to one of the reason my still you know like twenty six of us my families in the same house is I can feed them. You know, I can assure them. You know, their safety and security. You know, so many ways. I think that's why uh, the you know Gurkhas is so valued and highly respected. Why? So, also for the spiritual side of things, mm. how is that then when you join like an army? Like, yeah. is that separate that or does it still go with certain beliefs and values? Uh, no, I think, you know, but the that is actually a very good point because whatever we do in our life, I think we need to have, a, you know, right purpose and right intention because, you know, if it is something is not self-centric, you know, like I say, my my parents had a dream, so I'm sorbing, almost like I'm sorbing my parents, me being a, as a tool, you know. Anything, once we put our vision and am who we want to be, but beyond ourselves. And that is the intention, I think, what we definitely lacking of in the modern days. Because what I see, let's say compare from, from the like modern society in UK is, 
Neither we believe in God, nor we go to the church, nor we believe in ourselves. Then as a human, I think that is disaster. I think for 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 us for me to grow up at a spiritual in understanding that a connection with the nature and uh, let's say whatever god or whatever we believe but that will give me the purpose to serve serve well be in myself i think that actually helped me either in the battlefield you know in the war time or peace time or just being with going back to the seeing my parents is because in a way, our life is service, isn't it? We come here for a certain time and either we exist and become more ideologist and egoistic for who we are or we can do the same service on our energy for greater purpose, you know, whatever that could be your love, your family, your kids or your job. I think the important thing what I realize is being that spiritual understanding of beyond my parents because like I said, we our culture, parents and our ancestor is we treat them as a god. You know, we always, always connect with them. We always walk, learn to walk with them in our mind. And that always give us our hope and faith for any danger or for any anything um, bigger than us. Because one of the things, uh, what I really realize is when we have a depression or anxiety or so much thing going in our mind, but that's actually only come to protect my identity and who I am. But when I have a reason and purpose to protect outside me, you know, I want to do this one for this cause, this one, whatever we love, or adventure, sports, or love, or, you know, family or your partner, but that actually ourself doesn't exist, you know, then that will give a great strength. And whatever we fear is because it's come from me. But when I had a purpose outside and bigger than me, then myself going to crash. You know, that means we, you know, we're living in, in a peaceful or there is no such thing suffering. That's probably, I find, very helpful for me. How was it for your dad when he kept getting rejected? Did that hurt his pride? Yeah, I think massively. That's why, you know, there is a saying, you know, there is a saying in, in, in Nepal, we still say that the... If you know, if a mother or family can't achieve their peace, then their son has to continue. So we truly believe, and that's why I say, like I say, I, even I before I even born, then I, my first kind of understanding about the life and understanding about you know whatever is that or oh, you know this thing almost like place you on your shoulder, and then like oh. They want me to succeed in the, with their good intention, you know, like they want to, and then they want to, you know, serve so many ways for me and for them as well. Yeah, so, of course, that's why they even dream to join be a Gurkha because so his dream can be continued with me, maybe not even f for him. Yeah. So, what age did you go for selection for that? What age? Uh, I started uh, 18, but you know what? I failed first time. And what you're thinking when you failed? Did you see? Yeah. It could have been like your father, just yeah. keep trying and trying and trying. Yeah. First time I I came and I failed after three months. You know, it's quite long, enduring process to be a Gurkha's like thousand of them goes and they're just going smaller and smaller and it's like a couple of month process. And I fell in the last stage and when I fell, oh my God, you know, it's like whole world is collapsing and Saturn. And most importantly for me, it's not only my dream, and I realized it's actually my parents' dreams, like, shit, you know, I'm I'm now, double you know, the pressure. double the pressure. But only, you know, only realizing because when I won, when I day walking back from failing and because my village is up in a mountain, you know, through the forest and, and all this thing, you know, it's quite tough going. And I was walking through the forest on my own and then, you know, like your mind plays so many games. And actually when I reflect and look at the guys on the left, you know, it's, I think it looks like me. You know, I didn't see any different. And he, he flew to the UK. And also I look back on look on the right. And the same guy is like, oh, I think we were the same. But, you know, asking question why the hell I'm fail and they pass. And actually, it's nothing to do with them. It's something to do with it, me and then my performance. And then that's when I realized that. I said, like, tell you what, next time I'm going to improve myself. And... I'm not going to actually let me down 
because when I look at look at them, you know, is is my weakness. I'm I'm not performing well. What I wanted, if I wanted to achieve my dream and my parents' dream, I rather walk my ass up. So I then since that day, actually, I said like, shit, my I'm gonna do this one. Had completely changed my attitude, who I am, and I start learning quite a lot of English in off my time, you know, study in night time, and early morning wake up. So we call the one of the toughest. Uh, event is we call the doko race so it's actually representation of the backpack you know 25 30 kg uh, but we didn't have any backpack and you know, nothing no bag so we carry the doko was called the bamboo basket put on the back but the owners always we carry on our forehead you know like with the strap and then on their head so i still had you know like dent like grown up carrying the you know, strap on my head. That's how we survive in the farm in Nepal. There's no, no such thing, you know. And then, so we have maybe 20, 30 people because I, out of thousand, still thousand left for the final phase. And final phase is like this doko race or the race we have to run for maybe three to four kilometer uphill and then only one, two, three pass. Anything be behind the pass of one, two, three, top third will go other side and top third go this side. There is no... And I realize, you know, either I be on top third or you fail, basically. And then in that line, you stand by and when you say stand by, go with the, you know, instructor, the British Army instructor, like, my run, run for the life. You know, there is no such thing, you know, like, young boy on just carrying the basket on our head and up running and it's like just checking like no one is overtaking like this <laughs> <laughs> so it's a sprint to the lane yeah and the top three go through yeah and how many was went up for selection this year yeah uh i think this year is still same thing you know like uh there's up and on roughly about twenty thousand every year why so many is that a, is that the only thing that can maybe get them out to maybe travel the world or, yeah or is that a more like masculine is it a thing that just everybody wants to be like their grandfather or their yeah. father like why is it so popular uh every so basically as a young boy growing up in nepal everything we are you know dream the British army Gurkhas got that basically you know first thing you got the really you know as a young boy when you're walking around in the town you know like good jeans and you know and then you know like because they're strong you know they're you know they're joining the Gurkha is quite tough and you look very healthy strong and good looking and also you're medically fit and also you got a financial really good backup you know being paid in the uk and when you go back to nepal you are well off and then you know out of most then you 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 living in a parent's dream and you got you we living in a society is in everything society and our who we are driven and what we have and then when you go to nepal everyone's like oh chris is coming in town you know like he got you know he's come from uk and you got everything and you know like um then i think a boy from nepal you got opportunity to go and like you say oh i want to go to london i want to go to the war you know young boy you want to fight you know you want to perform whatever dream then everything is there and most importantly what i realize now even you know like after 30 years of so service the best thing happened in my life i still had no regrets you know um not only whatever we dream of, but be when what we dream of, you know, understanding the world, you know, understanding who I am, you know, the my connection with the nature and connection with my spiritual world also give me, you know, understanding of, you know, because obviously it's hard, you know, sometimes when we walking and walking for our job, walking for the mission, walking for your commander and your service, but we often miss ourselves, who we are. But for me, had a great opportunity and give me the, you know, checkpoint in my life to be service and also realize who I am, where I come from, and gave me the more opportunity to connect my childhood and spiritual life and what they are trying to teach me, you know, through the practice. So it's every boy's dream then to yeah. be a Gurkha? Absolutely. So where do you do the test? Is it in the UK? No, yeah. Uh, so basically... About three to five months, you know, depend upon the whatever time everything we started. So basically, how it started was, so you know, like Nepal is quite big, like yeah. very long, and all the retired Gurkhas from local area that they, they will be given responsibility. Or in this area, 
you will run the local selection. Then they will go in a word of mouth. But now it's internet. You know, when we grow up, like they come to the village and drop the leaflet. If anyone want to join the British Gurkha, this place, this time, turn up and with the local girl, local retired Gurkha. And we go there and he will like, he will do just basic, oh, what is your height? We have to be minimum five foot, two inch. And your chest has to be minimum 40, uh, 34 you know, like diameter just because of your long sides and your arms couldn't be broken and you can, you know, wink your left and right eye just to, you know, like you are shooting. And once you do that and you, f- you know, like, and they will most importantly check you are legitimately from this area and Nepalese. So once you did document check and your parents check and you got all this basic criteria and they will do the, you know, like basic uh, small running and walking and walking the single line, you know, walking backwards, and some basic fitness so that you are still fit. Yeah. And that takes, you know, like a couple of uh, weeks or so because everyone's come. And once everything ticks, then they will, what they call is a, a regional. Then once they're out of, let's say from my area, out of, you know, like three, 400 applied, then they will select 100 of you. You got everything matched up. Then we will meet you in one month's time in, in this area. That's first phase pass. And second phase, you go there, then more people all selected, but then we will have a, a you know, like a retired Gurkha officer and like six or seven retired Gurkha officer, all different. And they will then do the same thing, but a lot more professionally, you know, like everything now has to be done properly. You speak with the government, is he got a legal document, is he this place or that place, can he do the proper pull up, uh, pull up 12 times? straight to all time pull up and you have to do the sit up in a 45 degree angle no bend legs straight leg 45 within the one minute boom 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 it's like missing man you do that <laughs> and yes yeah, you know like small and then once you do that then they will do the proper retired medic british army they came and they will like oh what's your heartbeat what's your you know teeth what is your eye size what is your everything do the properly then then once you pass that then they will say like I don't know maybe out of thousand then there's like hundred of reason you know then they will so like this is now you all pass go to the final selection this is where the, all the you know like um, absorbing army officer and instructor from Catrick now we got the you know training center yeah. Catrick they flew they are like I don't know 20 to 30 of them then they will do the proper then you know like proper army check proper medical check and and then now it's pretty tough, man, because now it's English. You have to perform very good in English and, you know, math, education, and also all this stuff and the running and, you know. And it took almost like, like I say, six, six, six month process. And yeah, that's how the process work. What was it like when you passed? Oh, man, that was uh, one of the best day. And it's still, you know, I treasure in my uh, best thing happened, you know, and you can't, you can't dream, you know, you, you, and it's like, oh man, I'm joining and you got a lot of families and friends, my, because my family were like miles away up in the mountain, they have to walk for three days up in a feet and then come down to nearby the, you know, like Kathmandu and Pokhara and then they'd uh, jump in the bus and come down and they were waiting in the gate, you know, army, army camp inside the Pokhara, we could pick Pokhara where they do the central selection. And it was like coming and it's the best thing, man, you know, and, and, you know, I still cry my parents and myself, right? Oh, I, uh, I had so touching because my, because my grandmother and she lost her husband, my grand, in Second World War and my father couldn't join. And when I joined the Gurkhas and my grand, grandmother come and said, you know, my family will have no more suffer now. You know, I think that's probably the best thing as a man, you know, young man. And especially because in our culture, we are so much family oriented, so much emotion and so much life dedicated for our family and you young kids. But again, you know, in hindsight, it's a lot of pressure. But, you know, that pressure, once you release, it comes harmony, love and emotion as well. Is that how important it was to say no more suffering because you became a Gurkha? Yeah, because, you know, that's the, obviously it come with the limited understanding because now I can say that even for my grandma because uh, 
because that's how you know she see the life, isn't it? That's how because her whole life is how my family be secure and you know live in the society with happily and then everyone because we all have our story, isn't it? And especially my grandma because my we she lost her husband in the Second World War. Then community and society being a widow in our community is very and not a good thing because they they were talk about the we still believe in winch we still be, believe in the black energy and once you're happen to yourself and very hard to sustain in that community because everyone see you as a you know like bad energy or oh, why 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 our husband die must he must have something energy you know something has done and then sees not having a son to be then succeed you know what we call succeed in society driven is hard and then me maybe see before her death you know uh, and she seeing her grandson to be continue by his you know her husband dream and yet to be served and so the society and community we seeing that my family will find I think that's probably the biggest relief yeah. for, for a man I guess because do you believe that you broke some sort of curse then where yep. you weren't yep. having dark clouds or yep. badness around yes. you because yep. your husband yes. died or yep. that's yep. just life yes but yep. is that how important it was when people think okay she's got bad luck and she's been through all those years her son never yep. made it she yep. lost her husband yep. you failed the first yep. time yeah possibly you're thinking maybe we are cursed yep. and then when you do do it yep. it's like a release all those years all that pressure of yeah absolutely yeah that's, yeah. that's a beautiful thing so how we, how did your dad treat it? Oh, he the same? Yeah. No, he's he was over the moon, man. Is that like jealous of yeah, that? Yeah, it's just like, you it's like, like yeah, I'll fuck, <laughs> now, <laughs> I, I'll go for you now. <laughs> you feel like fast. So, it's like, yeah, he's he's great, man. He's been great. You know, like every, um, there's actually saying in, in Nepal, you know, we all have our own agenda as a human being, as we're evolving, because, um, they're saying that if we forgive our parents, whatever they do, you know, if we forgive our parents, our 99 problem will be solved. Because I think if we learn to understand them and if we understand, you know, the, what they do for us for, for this life, you know, that's first thing. Without them, we're not having a life. And then sometimes as a life evolves, we go, sometimes we've got a lot of shit going on and put the pressure that we is almost, we run away from them. By, but at the the core thing is once we start forgiving our closest people who we love for, you know, our partner, our kids, our anyone, or, you know, sometimes our friends, then they say it's easier to deal with other small things. That's the reason I think if you understand uh, forgive our parents, then everything, if we forgive the closest thing or deal with the closest thing, anything come up is smaller than that. So that's, yeah, you, you know, yeah, we still, you know, like I said, we still, you know, living together. Every time I go to Nepal, you know, like we have, you know, like drink together and, you know, all family. This is the, to be honest, br greatest thing, you know, I still very proud, you know, even though I sort of live and serve there 30 years, every time I go back, you know, that feeling, that vibration, that vibe you create within your loved one, you can't express, you know, we yeah. can't feel. That's what we definitely need to reinvigorate mm. and energy within. But I think Nepal's got that vibe in a whole anyway. Yeah. With the higher up, yeah. the air, there's something yeah. majestic about it. It's an amazing place. And so see when... You pass it and you're celebrating and everything. What's the steps in? Do you go to combat? Do you get regiment? Where do you go to? Do you get placed somewhere? Do you go to Nepal? Do you come to UK? What happens once you are in the Gurkhas? Yes. So basically, uh, once you final pass, then obviously uh, they will give on like now you are officially Gurkha. And uh, we take oaths, you know, with the Union Jack and with the Queen's, you know, Queen's Book. Then, yeah, fly. Fly to the UK, man. Yeah, that's the first thing. Never seen the plane. And, and uh, yeah, fly, landing the Heathrow Airport. And, um, yeah, everything is, like, exciting. And you, 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 we start, you know, dreaming, isn't it, our own dream. But when I uh, land, you know, 
and fasting is huge cultural, cultural shock, you know, as ever evolution shock in a way. And never fasting is and food, my food was huge shock. I couldn't understand the bacon and beans, my in my life <laughs> and toast. And I go to the first thing in the cookhouse, and this, I go, what is this? You know, I and then to be honest, for a month. I thought I'm going to die. I thought I'm not going to be able to, you know, one of those things because never seen, never understood. And I couldn't believe people live by with bacon, beans and sauces and, you know, like toast. And that is the hard thing to, but, you know, it's life, isn't it? When you come here for the greater vision and you have something driven, then, you know, you, a couple of months time, you struggle in a physical level, but, you know, still, that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, next thing I'm very shocked is the because while we grown up in Nepal, we are we are worshiping the nature like trees, you know, water and you know grasses. We worship and we we want to be part of them. You know, we do stuff like that. First thing when I came inside the camp and they were like first thing like, oh, don't walk on the grass. You know, give off the grass. You know, don't you know don't try to cause the you know like uh, the trees and thing are like. It's a different, you know, like because we it's com different mindset, but obviously it has a purpose, you know, wherever we are. Yeah, so we started like that, and it's been, you know, obviously loving it, though, you know, loving it, the discipline, learn about the human character, you know, character building, discipline, and hard work, you know, every morning, you know, never run, you know, I, we never learn to run, you know, like feet, you know, like here, and then every day training. Start shaping up, learning. Then first thing I realize is my English, because uh, obviously I had no such uh, academic education. It's hard to be calm and start, you know, learn. On and I realize, shit, I don't know nothing about life. You know, it's not that easy. Even though sometimes we had this dream and we think we achieve, but actually just the starting point. You know, struggling of our steep hill is now the start. And I said, like, oh, I need to learn English. I need to learn, you know, doing a lot more exercise, uh, you know, understanding culture and society. And everything is fast running up and up and up. But, you know, we had no choice because you are coming here yeah. with your reason and you just walk for it, I guess. So you've became a Gurkha. You think you've completed life. Yep. Realizing you're, yep. you're, you're thinking you're at the top of the mountain, not right. realizing that you're at the bottom of someone else. Yeah. Right? Yes. Right. How was that for you then, being an outsider, couldn't really speak English? Because your language is still quite it's still quite strong for, like, if you've been here for 30 years, it's still yep. kind of, you can still see and hear the, you can, you're in the, from the pole, you can, yep. you can tell. Yep. But, yep. so for you as, how was that as an outsider? Was there any like um, people trying to test you from being an outsider with the accent and being different culture and different beliefs and not understanding what toast and beans was? Yeah, because you know what people are like. People are ruthless as well. Yeah, did you get tested? Yeah, when you just came. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, it's it's a life, isn't it? And then we understanding, learning, and understanding to adopt. I guess understanding. I think biggest thing for me is uh, either we can blame someone else and the situation or the whatever condition, or we can blame ourselves. I think for me, that's why I say like straight away, you know, I need to, you know, uplift my language if I want to do well. Then, you know, rather than oh, you know, I was from there, I haven't had an education, but you know, not learn now, then learn today, you know, start doing every day. Every day forward, that's how we started, you know, every day, like I will learn four days forward a day, you know, and if within the weeks you start learning, you know, more than 20 words, and then if you keep that discipline and thing, and there is no such thing, and after a month and year, you already became, you know, quite big on vocabularies and understanding, and of course, like I say, situation is situation, man. You know, wherever we go, you know, there is always someone who will be giving a hard time or someone to always be a situation. But again, either we try to, you know, judge them or, you know, why me? You know, what are the situations? Is there anything I have done, you know, like, and giving the bigger purpose, you know, like I'm here not to, you know, like, not to be judged or not to be, you know, you know, giving me suppress, but I'm here for greater purpose. I have a family, I have a love, you know, I have a service to give. 
then you know that we can put in a perspective isn't it? i think that's probably the biggest thing i learned you know um being being a foreigner and yet again service here but we need to have a purpose bigger than us i think that's that's where the you know we can we can talk about more you know like because one of the thing i i have learned over the years is that the uh, you know, in in the war time, you know, when I was uh, battlefield going through the door, you know, someone someone tapped me on my shoulder and say, "Chris, you step back. You have a families and friends." And this man turned around. I say, "He's an English man, you know, English SS man, and white man, you know, tapping someone else's shoulder and say, you know, and the uh, you know." Truth is that he gone inside and died, and you know then your whole perspective of our the way we see the world, the way we perceive the information, whatever the you know like media, everything thing is collapsed because when my realization is that the when come to life and death, and when come to the life, there is no such thing you know color race, you know our society doesn't really matter. I think it's just who we are as a human soul, you know, have have we got that one God and to evolve and understanding the life. I think that's probably the most crucial thing in our life and no one has done for me, you know, being like you say, uh, you know, because that judgment mind we gain and condition through our wherever culture and society or place we born that is just conditioning with that environment but as a human we still have a same you know if we if we can tap into ourselves aware as a human and everything is you know given what happened did someone stop you from going into somewhere and they died yeah what happened so basically it was actually in battlefield tour and you know like over the, my army career and gone inside and you know like this lot of IED and then you know, like bullet fly around and he's unfortunately he took my place and you know step in IED and bullet coming and he is first you know like first in and death and you know that's what I realized life is not what we see and life is not only what we you know hope for when that that's what I say you know, when when we realize that, and whatever we see, whatever we feel, it's just our mind and our you know conditioned human brain. But actually, when it come to the life and death, you know, every it's it's only have we got the good humanity within us. It's that soul within us who's recognized that soul. You know, I think that's what I realize, and also. Uh, that's what I said, you know, this, uh, when come to this time, when come to this moment, nothing gonna matter, you know. It's only our mm-hmm. and our character and our energy. How long, because you were in the SES 22, is that correct? That's right, yeah, yeah. Were you the first Gurkha to ever pass the SES election? It's, uh, yeah, one of the first, one of the first. There was, you know, few, uh, you know, from other, but from, the, for, so basically we call the RGR, so it's the Royal Gurkha Infantry. So there's two of us passed together, yeah. So out of all the millions who have tried and trained to be a Gurkha, out of the thousands who did become a Gurkha, and then to you to be past SS selection, like one of the toughest probably tests a man can go through. Um, it's very tough, obviously. You've got you know, the Navy SEALs and other yeah, yeah. sort of combat. There's combat all around the world and soldiers all around the world that have to go through some tournament. But the SES selection is up there as one of the hardest and toughest. Why do you think you passed? I think it's a very deep question, to be honest. For me, it's, um, I've been told. I've been told to go on the selection. Because, like I say, from the you know Royal Gurkha Infantry Regiment, we didn't have no one. So I wouldn't even for me. I didn't know nothing about the selection. Of course, I was aware of you know SAS and UKSF space in the wall. But until that point, until hundred years of Gurkhas, we we always thought Gurkhas is not good enough to pass the you know selection. But then one day, my OC officer commanding the British officer. 
called me in the office and sat down. I was like, my, I was sat down like, shit, what have I done wrong? You know, normally when your officer commander call you in the office, you something did wrong and they're going to give you like big stick, you know. And I sit down like, and then he said like, no, no, Chris, relax, you know. And I'm like, he said like, first thing is, oh, did you hear about the SAS? I said like, yeah, everyone about is fucking it's best in the world, isn't it? And it's like, and how much you know about the selection? I said like, not much. I don't even know, you know, nothing about it. He said like, don't worry. You know, we're going to send the first trial of the Gurkhas from the, you know, like RCR and uh, there will be 40 of you and you you are. So tomorrow just get ready and off you go. So that's how I started, the, you know, uh, selection. But, you know, uh, uh, one thing I realized is why I pass is that the whatever we do in our life, when there is no duality, when there is no such thing for me is I was a I was a Gurkha and either being alive or death I am a Gurkha you know I will do everything with my physical mental and emotion devotion that's my life was that and there is no question there is no question either I pass or fail or life or death you know because devotion and love and my uh, you know compassion is so much being service and being do good you know, intention for my parents and my family. And when, when my officer co- told me to do, you know, as a soldier, your officer and your comrade and colleagues told to do something, you go and die, you go and die. You know, that's how I trained for. And then when he said, to be honest, I had no choice. You know, you brief, uh, 40 of you going to go trial. Don't worry, there will be a big fort owner waiting for you in the morning, 6, 6 p.m., off you go and I'm like oh okay <laughs> so when I was on the selection that's like I think that's more than almost 400 you know like you see man like British guy you know commando marine paras you know like Scottish you know island everyone's like actually quite a good friend with the guys from Scotland in regiment and then they're torn up like rip you know like like six foot tall and you know, like big muscle and like everything warriors. is like warriors. And I turn up with my you know small leg jerk. I was looking at like I was like, what? I was like, what the hell I'm doing here? I have no hope. Man. But you feel out of place? Oh my god, my your your mind is playing the game. Is constantly like, like what what I'm doing here? But again, it wasn't my uh, my intention either. You know, it's like I was just you know happy go. <laughs> oh shit! And then, then you know, like then. But I think there is still within us. There is always something, isn't it? Like something you will, you know, you will not giving up. It's yeah. like even though your mind is playing a trick, like oh, this is like no, my within you got your soul energy. We call chitta. Chitta is uh, something which is connected within us with the universe. You know, that's always come to you. It's like no, I'll just turn up. You know, I'll do my best. You're not giving up. Whatever you mind is saying turn up start doing this thing and yeah and then I think because it's one of the without doubt you know one of the hardest selection I ever done even though I was very fortunate you know I actually managed to did the um, you know quite a few international selection myself but man UKSF is probably still the hardest thing I ever done yeah and um, uh, we started about 400 and only 12 12 of us man to the regiment is the uh, is, is the moment. And how was that feeling, someone who's looking at all these so-called warriors, but then you see them falling off? Because as the older you get, as you're a kid, when you look yeah. at someone older or bigger, yeah. you think they can eat me anything. Yeah. But when you get older, you actually realise, like you say, it's that inner something, that inner warrior that's totally yeah. different. It's here. Yeah. yeah no absolutely. matter how big they are, no matter how, what they look like a it's just a perception, but it doesn't mean fuck all because you don't know if they're weak inside. Yeah. And you'll tend to see the majority of people are. Yeah. All you need to do is keep consistent. Yeah. How is that feeling when you start seeing these big men fall off and you're still at the forefront? What was that feeling? My, that was the life changing, to be honest. For me, slicks and his life, life changing and understanding the what is human body capable of. Never seen so many, you know, bodies falling apart. Never seen so many you know, bodies giving away. And actually, like I say, you know, it's, it's a time of uh, understanding the enlightenment, you know, like for me, it's like, like again, when I turn up, I couldn't understand these big guys. And when I start going in month and month, it's long course, man. 
it's like now it's one year you know every day you're beasting and falling and you look at them and and one of the example is like when we tabbing you know when we uh, it's in Borneo you know they do the couple of phase and one of the phases in Borneo in the jungle they drop you in the heli in the jungle and first thing is like carry your backpack like you know to all this rasen which is like maybe sometimes like 80 90 kg with your you know rifles and you have no brief you just 40 degrees my sweating like ass up and then holding the thing and then the ds will be like you know when i speak he just oh, keep following me and uh, and uh, after two hours he speak and say like oh next stop will when someone's drop all right that's it, man. And I'm like, we don't know what the hell is going, how long we're we going, and like 40 degrees, and no stop, keep going and going, and look around, one guy's fall off, second guy fall off, and like, okay, stop. And then DS comes like, how many finger? Two. It's like, fuck off, my ear, you are all right. And keep walking. It's like, man, what the hell? Your mind, our mind is couldn't conceive that kind of information, never seen. And after, you know, like 20 minutes, and this guy still woke up, stand up, like, oh, shake it head up, fucking gas up on my side. I'm like, what the hell? It's unbelievable. My, I was like, this is human body, you know, constant learning and learning. You know, then actually, then you have, like I say, either seeing that body falling apart, you, you can be that. Or next thing is, when it's wake up, come to that, come to and it's still challenging you. You know, he challenging you, then you can be that, you know. We can learn, I say, like, I ain't, ain't going to give up, you know. If you can fall off and, you know, stand up and run, I will also keep going until I'm dropped dead. And that's the, like I said, that's one of the biggest lessons learned about me, you know, seeing this, uh, you know, like, you know, physical. And like you said, my, it's everything in the mind, isn't it? I think yeah. once you have a target and devotion, and you got that responsibility, you know, and to to solve, then you our body is only a tool, isn't it? I you know, you got eyes on it, then your body is make sure that work for you to achieve, you know, be one ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's for me is the great. What do you think the main ingredient is, especially all these men, different shapes, different sizes, different backgrounds, different religions? But what's that one thing that makes people different? It makes people never quit. That makes people think I'm going to outwork everybody else, because that stuff I don't think you're born with it. I think it's something that comes through life, your life lessons, yeah. your or people around you. It makes you because a lot of people in the military, it's because they come from broken homes, they come from dark places of abuse and bullying, and they've just had enough. Like a lot of I know a lot of the Scottish pass the tests and. There's just something, I don't know if it's something in their blood, maybe it comes from previous lives or DNA, I don't know, but what do you think the main ingredient is for someone to pass SES selection? I think the main thing is the character, character of who we are, not physical character, mental character. I think that's probably, like you say, you know, that probably inheritance from our ancestor. You know, like we say, you know, like we know my grand great great grandfather color and eye color, hair color is still with me. And that again, we we don't believe that, but that that energy and you know like the DNA we have is maybe whatever we see and think is not everything. You know that within us is that thrive. You know to drive. And once we have a purpose in our life, and I think maybe physical purpose or physical me- uh, limestone could be our mentorship. You know could be the environment who who we with. That's definitely played a crucial role in our life. Even though sometimes we thrive, we got everything, but you know, like maybe something is not gonna supporting us. But when you have that tribe within us, and you have a right company, you have a right friendship, you know, you have right partner and right commander and environment. That's you know, then you definitely might nothing gonna stop you. Mm-hmm. You know, and for me, it's like that. You know, British officer. You know, if I wasn't me, I have no clue about the SAS man, you know, I mean, only reason I'm here is that his guidance, you know, he must have seen my DNA, my energy and my drive for a soldier and look at it's like, this guy got it, you know, let's give him opportunity. And 
and without he signposting me you know without he telling me you can go and do it then believe in yourself with that you know able to you know have understanding thank you you know i will go and do and that's yeah. what's important i think but you seem like the perfect soldier for any sergeant or captain who's who's the highest rank uh th- this was a major so this, the major so, yeah for someone like yourself who's ingrained you yeah. want to be a gurkha yeah. because i think that's that's your whole life yeah so you want to follow orders you would be willing to do anything yeah. so i'd imagine they would have seen that yeah let's give this guy a chance because he's given us everything yeah a guy from the paul willing to fight for the british army but it's mad as well yeah it is, it is mad a yeah. spiritual guy who yeah. Yeah. comes from a spiritual background family orientated to then leave your family to then be fighting for the british yeah um and to then pass selection yeah it's unbelievable man fair play and what was it like going into combat man it's the life-changing you know i think um life changing so many way and also and this is where actually i reconnect with myself with my spirituality and my you know so called past life or my spiritual life you know one of those thing we are young and when i was even a grown up with that culture i hate it you know i hate it with that kin culture i didn't understand because you're young and 13 years so you want to do and to the thing but when i join the gurkhas again the being a gurkhas is to service my parents my ancestor my dear dream and became my dream as well and then when you have that purpose within us and dream and intention nothing gonna stop us and then you know my commander my mentor see you know give me you know opportunity to serve even higher whatever i want to be that is a great opportunity and going to the battlefield is that the you know we we truly believe in you know colleagues we truly believe in the you know energy and who we are and who we are serve and ready to go on die for you know i'm sure you have got so many situation in your life and you would do anything for someone who you love for and that is probably the biggest thing like i said the story i told you before is so many you know my colleagues who i thought never going to give their lives an opportunity for me and my once i understand that nothing going to stop me life is the my intention and vision and my trust you know when i'm going through the door someone is looking after my back in a way they're serving my life you know my saving my life and yet again i think once once we cross that border and yeah man is is we see so much beyond ourselves and we synchronize our energy and our harmony to survive and th- you know thirst not only the in a deeper deeper you know meaningful life is not we are not only for ourselves even though we are there to save the colleagues and more than that the reason we left our home you know the moment we left our family this is the reason you know like if you look yourself and myself the reason we leave our home and thing is nothing for you everything for your family everything for our loved one be so that we can give them opportunity what we they are wishing for i think that's often miscommunicate with our families and our partner and our loved one because oh you know we separate but no let's make that strength you know whatever boy or woman or goes to the war the reason is the home reason is the love we left behind and that home we protect our loved one and that home protect the country the country we protect our family and we go ourselves for them i think this is what very and once we have that intention and vision and clear understanding why and what is the reason nothing on this stuff us mate because you were nearly 20 years in SAS yeah pretty- what is SAS 22 what is that or is it 22 SAS what is that so is the um you know like when they started you know like when before you know first world or second world mm-hmm. war time and uh, it's in initially they started with the 21 you mm-hmm. know what they call 21 special force and then by them was you know like there was an a uh, fixed regiment or there was a regular it there was like oh we'll we'll make you as a group and make you a special force and you go on the you know front line 
in Dofa or you know like Oman around the world but when they come back then you dismantle and just go back to your regiment like go to Highland or go to the you know like whatever you come from go and then thing and when this happening a lot more after you know like second world time they say like oh I think we're gonna make it you know permanent regular special forces and because they wouldn't they started wanting to do the 21 but then oh we can't do it because it's already so we're gonna make it just a normal mate. You know, yeah, like, that was right. just like twenty two and yeah. Because you've done a few tours. What was the the worst tour you were on when you really? Because you question everything yeah. in life. There's different stages of life when you see the world differently. Yeah. There were certain stages in my life that I thought was normal. Now I look back and I realised how dysfunctional and fucked up it was. Yeah. But it's just crazy to think that we see the world all differently sometimes. Yeah. But when you're on these tours and you're seeing brothers die, you're seeing yeah. fucking screams and yeah. women and children and like, what's the worst tour you were on where it, it re- really plays in your mind? Yeah, I think to be honest, is the you know uh, uh, one thing I learned is the we need to evolve. Isn't it? if we're not evolving, then we we just basically going to the deep hole again and again. Um, you know, I I think I I don't I don't recall as a worst. You know, trip, but because I have done so many, to be honest. Mm. And but what I definitely learned was every time, you know, every time I go to the, you know, front line, whatever part of the world, is to find the reason and have an intention what I'm there for, you know. And then and could be different, you know. Like sometime I went there, didn't have a family, you know, like my own family, just for parents. Then I. I think I make my parents happy, but when I go to second time, I find the colleagues and friends, you know, who are willing to die for me. And it's like, oh, I'm gonna willing to die for this guy, you know, keep me there, you know. I'm, that's that's probably then, as uh, like you say, you know, like seeing a lot of you know s- situation and thing that we evolve. Then for me, it's then having a right purpose, you know, what I'm going there for is not only to be, you know, uh, whatever the mission, but also how can we stabilize, how can we give, you know, the world, you know, make, make a, you know, make a better place. We're not there going there just to, you know, like a lot of us will walk on hearts and mind, you know, how can we give them, an, you know, like meaningful life, not only by beating off or killing or, you know, it's, but also educate them, you know, also be a part of the, you know, locals and cause. I think that's, we like I say that we changed our approach, and you know that's the only way we can be, you know, meaningful and not only outside, but I think it's equally important for us to be meaningful and peaceful within us as well. And we need to have intention. Do you think that helps you with oh. the stuff that you've seen and the stuff that you've been involved in to then see the world that way? Because it's it's not as bad yeah. as because. It's destruction and pain. It's yeah. it's hard to see, but listen, this is the way of the world. And how how hard is it when you lose a brother, when you lose someone yeah. who's by your side, who's willing to die for you, and you're willing to die for them? How hard is that it's, when you lose someone? It's very hard, man. I think to be honest, that's probably one of the moments took me to the darkest place. You know, when you uh, when you do, so, you know, almost you, I you, I ask a question. I'm li- am I living their life? You know, is this my life? And is this a life of a gift. That's where our whole who who we are is gonna change, you know, massively. Then, and that's where our intention change. You know, I think when you ask that question, this is not my life. You know, my life is you know gifted by or am I living? I'm living their life, and that's where you know, like then what I will do from this point onwards is I will only do the good intention, nothing for me. I will do for service to others. I will do for the service for local community or culture, but still I will do it, but with a good and clear vision. And yeah, I think if we, that's uh, one of the things like we say is if we don't have that, you know, purpose beyond ourselves, then we're just going ourselves. Oh, I want to do this one for me. I want to do I on more. I want to do more. I think, no, I think it's very important for us to find the balance what for me, my purpose, and how can I also service for the nation and for the loved one? You know, again, we come down back to our, you know, whatever we do, either family or friends or parents or job or anything, but it has to be something beyond ourselves. Why did you do it so long? Because I know a lot of people leave after five years, ten years. You went nearly 20 years. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, 
you know, I think colleagues may, you know, I cause like I say, never, never seen, you know, like give me the opportunity to understand the pure English man, you know, pure British man, and you know, even for me, is I always, you know, have it hard to grasp something, you know, when we born with complete different nature, culture, and society with different color. Yet again, you come and do and whatever, you know, media and people think of outside the world, you know, but it's actually reality is different. You know, like I say, I've been there, I serve, I seen so many deaths in my life and being alive and death in that situation when you see the true nature of human, I think then you have, you, we sift our, you know, the way see and then if he's willing to give his life and so do I, you know, I think that's, give me, I still have, a, you know, great mentor i still have a great friendship you know my guys are still serving one of my closest friends are still you know quite high up and we still talk and you know if i honest with you i don't have that relationship with anyone else even i'm from nepal i don't i don't speak with any of these thing with with my nepalese friend because it's not the bad because my majority of my life only not being alive but with my death situation you know when hit the rock bottom life when I'm dealing with the death behind myself and this, you know, friendship and colleagues is there and you know, what you need more than that, you know. You seem to still have it together though. How old are you, Chris? I'm 46. Like, you look fucking great. Like, how <laughs> how do you still have it together when a lot of other people life spiral because they don't have that discipline, they don't have that regimented life anymore to have orders and and it's like, mm. some, some of them are like babies. Which I've noticed with the needing, yeah. like a father or a, like yeah. a mother figure to be getting told what to do, make your bed and do this, and there's orders and there's times to do. Once they come out of that, they seem lost, and then all the noise, all the screams comes mm-hmm. into their mind, and and then really struggle. Like, why do you? Is that because obviously listening to you just a short time, you seem to have your intentions. Yeah. Why you done what you done? Yeah. Which makes it kind of okay. A lot of people don't really have that. Yeah. A lot of people don't find. Yeah. Because you're there to do a job. Yeah. Listen, if, if it was the perfect world, there shouldn't be was. Yeah. But we're living in a world where it's yeah. destruction all the time. So you're there to follow orders and do a job. Do you feel as if your intention matches everything that you've done then so you don't feel as bad to a lot of others who can't handle it and then yeah. they spiral into drink, drugs, suicide? But what's your secret to then be still sane, if you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what you're like back yeah. home or anything, no, but you still no. seem to have it together. I think... Uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, like even the, you know, like in the London life or the, you know, like modern life, we tend to focus on the physical aspect a lot, youngster, and and we don't really have a connection with our emotional health and the spiritual health. I think for us to being a fully function human being, you know, as much as physical, actually physical health is only 20%. You know, whatever we think, we're going to the gym or doing climbing, whatever we do, it's first adventure, it's actually 20%. And we come to the emotion part, which is 50%. And the and most fundamental is the spiritual part, or the faith, or hope, and love, and emotion. And we need to master that every single day. You know, I think this is what we're definitely lacking up in, in the modern society. So that's why I call, you know, before... In the modern, the biggest downside for the modern kid is that we don't, they don't go into church and sit down. There is actually science, you know, why we go inside the church. It's not to worship the God, but going inside, sitting down, and being in silence. When the ring, you know, like when the bell ring, then you have a in a, in a vibrate our energy from survival part to our, you know, like realization mind. The shifting of energy within us. That's why the physical, mental, and spiritual are the energy. And once we start mastering our energy, my, you are untouchable. You know, like untouchable. Yeah, yeah, meditation. Mm-hmm. And but the for me daily practice will be every day my meditation, so called meditation or faith. I go to you know like church. My I church every day. Yeah, yeah. because I read something there. The biggest sports stars in the world have all got a faith. Yeah. Whether that's m- being Muslim or yeah. Christianity, Anything. they've all got a belief in God or Jesus and yeah. hear them speak when they've won the Super Bowl or yeah. 
the PGA, yeah. but the biggest sports stars on the planet have yeah. all got a religion to follow, yeah. which is mad. For yeah. me, I'm open minded to yeah. all. There's never been one that's really. I love the Buddhism and I love Sikhs as well. I love mm. their beliefs. Um, Christianity, I was yeah. raised a Catholic, but kind of fell away from it. Um, I'd like to dip my toe into them all to see what fits for me because I know people walk into mosques and they feel a presence. People mm. walk into churches or chapels and they just feel something connected. Um, but I read, yeah, all the biggest sports stars and mm. people have followed something. So whether that's following a higher power or something, they've got a belief in something. So there may be something in it. Like, so you've kept it together all those years. Yeah, like, all the together. How hard was it then coming out, especially if you've gave something your whole life? Oh man, that is very hard. You know, like that is probably the hardest thing I ever, you know, I overcome and I do do share quite a lot, you know, when I'm talking to the, you know, military camp and thing is that the, because, you know, our, our habit, our mind and our daily physical aspect is, you know, conditioned and that is the biggest thing. And also for me is even harder because they offer me longer more and they offer me commission, you know, became commission and an officer and he stay and they offer me job and I was, and you know, but it's not, like I say, I had no regrets. Every single day of my thirty years life is my perfect. I learned so much. I, 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 you know, my kept my my parents' dream happy and my dream happy. But I think also what I start learning over the years is that the through the battlefield, through the life and the situation is like we say we need to evolve. We need to change according to who we are, uh, and. Then when I realized after, you know, like 30 years of service and I say like, oh, I think I, I, my, my part of service is done. You know, I think I need to then maybe I'm now I'm doing a lot more spiritual and meditation and also, you know, helping, helping like, you know, like, you know, I'm running a lot of retreat and a lot of, you know, coaching in, in that side of life, how, how, how to handle ourselves. And um, once I realized that, then I think, for me, it's now to be served, you know, because still I believe I'm living someone else's life. You know, someone, so many people have died for me. And for me, seeing my life is that maybe I can reach out more what I've gone through in my life and giving the service and maybe speaking about it in, in a good way, you know. And uh, then I, I, it was very hard and biggest and still had a really big, you know, a decision with my family. You know, I got now, I'm married, I got daughter, I got families, you know, 26 families in Nepal. Everyone is rely on me. And, you know, yet again, you have to, not only your, my dream, you know, not only me feeding, but 20, 26 of them in Nepal and my families and kids here. And I have that shit, everything going to stop, you know, all the income going to stop. And but yet again, have that faith and okay with that, you know. And this is the hardest thing. But I think over the over the last two years or so, you know, I'm I'm very content. And I, uh, you know, like sometimes you make a move and then you don't know how it's gonna go. It's like I visualize, like you know, like I we used to free fall in Afghanistan nighttime, you know, thirty thousand feet, pitch black, and you have. In that moment in time, you have no thing to grab because you have been falling 180 miles per hour with everything tingling with you, night time, and then you know still you have inside you you have some hope and faith. I think that's why you know it's not a we don't have to believe in a god. You know it's like I say I go I go to mosque my I go to. Hindus, I go to temple, last two weeks I've been to the church. It doesn't really matter for me, but for me, that connection, who we are, beyond ourselves is so important. Like I said, when I'm very falling skydiving from plane in Afghanistan, I got that connection within me. The DNA has to be connected within us. And I still had a lot of questions, you know, you know, and you're still okay. And when, when physically and mentally there is nothing to, nothing for to okay. And that, you know, belief within us, or we call faith, hope, has to be, exist within us. When are you at your lowest? I think lowest was that when someone died for you. You know, that's that's what I changed the way, you know, like, like I said, I changed the way I see the life. My perspective and perspective is completely different. And that's what I realized, you know, here I am, 
for a service. Mm-hmm. Do you feel as if you're carrying the pressure of other people's lives on your shoulders also by staying so long because you know you're funding so many different families because you must be a hero back home, especially with the accomplishments and achievements yeah. that you've had. So were you not just, was there times where you, do you think you'd have went as far if you never had the family back home who kind of, your father yeah. wanted your life, but do you ever yeah. feel that was more pressure for then you to stay because you didn't want to let them down? Yeah. It's always, man. I think always we will have that. But that's why we are, it is so important to connect with our spirituality, who we are. If I have only living on my, you know, physical body and then my emotional body, I would have fucked. And so do we, because we often only live in that emotion and, you know, like that. Then once you physical emotion or physical energy, then we go to emotion energy, which is always close to our heart. And then when you go to the spiritual energy, which is be one and connect then everything will collapse. Because once you connect with the spirituality and your realization mind, which is then who you are and why you are there, then I'm there for you, then whatever I have is your. Whatever we have, you made me, I'm your. So there is not, nothing to hold on, nothing to, not, not, none of the energy and emotion is battling for me, then I think give me that you know, strength and understanding doesn't come from the emotion healing. You know, it has to come from our energy and spiritual understanding or to call hope or faith or God. That's why it's so important. So when you come out then, I know you've now climbed Everest and you do some mad adventures. Is that because you can't stay still? Is that because you need to be doing something still like the old SAS mindset, army mindset, where you have to be, keep going like, do you ever just relax? Obviously, when you go to church or meditation, yeah, but yeah. Do you ever, have you got to keep going still? Yes, I think that's why, you know, when I go back to my three point, we, whatever level we are at, I know some of the people are 90 years old. They can't physically commit as a 60, you know, 40 years old boy. And they can't commit their, you know, like sensation as, as much as adult or teenager. But it's so important for every living being, human being, active and use the physical energy, the emotional energy, and spiritual energy. I think we have to use max every single day. Every single day, we have to do the do some physical activity. If you can walk for hundred meter, walk for hundred meter. You know, then if you can run for a two kilometer, run for two kilometer in terms of physical activity. Then when you come to your emotion healing then practice that emotion healing and in touch with that emotion healing. Normally when we something suppressing or giving a negative vibe or the bad energy or a good energy, not only bad, also good energy. I think the minute we hang along with more good energy, then it's going to come down. Then the minute we hang along with the bad energy, it's going to come up. But it's important to in touch with our happiness and sadness and finding the balance. If we are aware of that, then we are okay. And that then, next thing is that kind of emotion, you know, like daily in touch and also the spiritual part, whatever the hope and faith and intention we have in our, you know, like, oh, two, two years time, I want to do this project because it's servicing for the community or servicing for my mom and dad or servicing for my daughter or my son or my anything friends or oh, I'm going to go there I have no personal gain I'll just go there because I love to be around and you commit that if you have that three things every single day you know then I think slowly we'll see a change within us I think that's what's very important what do you think life is? Uh, life is service to who? to something beyond ourselves positive little Positively, yes. It has to be positive, yeah. That's why I think whatever dream, whatever vision we have, it has to be the positive, man. Right? I think it has to be something beyond ourselves, either service for a country, service for the family, service for your culture, your society, that only give us uh, you know, true purpose in the life, beyond ourselves. Mm. What's your biggest achievement that you think you've done so far in life? You know, it's very hard question. I think in terms of uh, 
you know, materialistic, all the world we live in, definitely being, you know, passing the SAS selection is one of the hardest. And the girl, because those are the, my key, you know, life, you know, outside world achievement. But we didn't mean the spiritual is that understanding how the energy work, understanding who am I and why I am, am I here. I think understanding that true soul and then giving the purpose outside, I think that's definitely my, uh, even though I grown up with, the, you know, like Buddhist monk and the, you know, Hindus and Shamanism background massively as a spiritual guy being eldest son, but I never understood that in my life because it's, it is only the practice. But being in here, bringing life and death so many times, seeing my colleagues and seeing so many situations, I had that, you know, I, I realize life more than what is life. I think once we come so many times death, our own death, there is no death. Death is normal exists within us because you've been in that situation, seen that, and that's became strength and doesn't actually exist. I think that's probably my biggest uh, enlightenment in my life. Why do you think so many people suffer in life just now? The biggest suffer in, in life is that, the, um, you know, they, uh, they, they don't have a intention outside themselves. And because they're living in the conditioned society, conditioned mind, and only conditioned mind and conditioned society only give us, you know, like fear and anxiety and, you know, like or happiness. Because that, like I said, the only problem is that conditioned mind give you the happiness. The thing is that not going to last. Then we go into a full circle again. Then once you, that is the biggest. Who? long did it take you to climb Everest? Everest, uh, yeah, I think I uh, many times, man, you know, now I've been there. How many times you've done it? Yeah, I've been expedition leader, as a leader and planning uh, four times, submitted once, and been to the, you know, like above 8,000 meters many times. Uh, Everest is all around London to London about five weeks. How is it, do you know, is it NIM? Nims? Yeah, 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 very so well. Who was SAS? Was he not? No. You know, he was Special Forces? No? Yeah, he, he he was Special Forces. SBS? Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, what did he do the 14 peaks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can, yeah, he fucking smashed it as well. He's like, massive, mate, yeah. But he still looks as if he's got his shit together. Like, yeah. Like, every day, SAS, SPS, and snipers, and so many military, and I've got yeah. nothing but respect for them, but I can see a lot of them are broken. Man. And sad. And uh, and it's hard to see because I always say, but they're willing to die for their country. But yet when they came out, nobody's willing to die for them. Yeah, because we do a lot of homeless work back in Glasgow. Yeah. And it's a lot of military Ooh. on the streets, yeah. and you see the sadness in them. Get those guys, and it fucking breaks your heart that they're just left there to rot. Yeah, it's it's hard, man. Because this is the you know, like I've been very fortunate, man. You know, be, uh, being uh, grown up with the culture, you know, and try, you know, give me the, you know, uh, ladder to understand how to deal with, 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 with our emotion health. And, you know, like when we hit this thing, when we see the people, like I say, especially the modern people, neither we believe in, in our culture, our parents or the, you know, like anything between us, nor, nor we believe in ourselves. And that is a disaster. And that is, I think this is what the biggest problem I see is that, uh, we that that's why I say we need to have something beyond ourselves when we want to achieve something. And if we don't have that, then community and society, human, gonna collapse. Mm. I think that's what the big problem we have. How's life now? Life is good, man. You know, I'm. Uh, you know, after leaving the biggest challenge, leaving the service uh, with with the family and with my daughter, I think they are happy. And you know. Again, you know, you know, is what we call is the uh, attitude of gra gratitude. You know, we always our mind always on more. I want more. I want this and that. But I think what is too important is that oh, this is what I got. You know, this is who I am. I let's move from here. You know, and have that conversation and connection uh, with with family or anyone who it could be anyone who you have trust. You know, your colleagues and have a 
you know, express. I think we need to find the way of expression, either writing or reading or talking or speaking, and just share and release our, you know, emotion. And that's how we became, you know, um, living the gratitude and thankful for our life. Why do you help so many veterans now? I think, you know what, that's exactly like you say, you know, in, 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 because a lot of, uh, one of the thing I realized is once the service leave or they left the service, we, when we are in service, a lot of comrades, you know, a lot of colleagues and you, you know, strong and, but when you leave, but we don't have that, you know, camaraderies and, you know, living together and, oh, let's go, you know, do that. And they often live, live, you know, on their own. And how it started was, I think, a few years back, um, and, you know, like a couple of MPT guys and come up and ask, oh, they want to climb, but no one is taking them on, the, you know, like their path. And I said, like, oh, you know, I I might be able to help, help, help you guys and, you know, just kind of take your time. And then more I, then we working together. So I climbed, we took in 2019, first triple amputee, three of them, Harry, Justin, and Stephen, you know, all of them submitted Mount Blanc. And then the biggest thing I realized is when we submitted on the top of the Mount Blanc and and I said, like, oh, congratulations, guys, you made it. And three of them, no amputee, my on the ground level, look up and they said, we are here because of you. And, and I'm like, shit, you never thought like that. And I... I then look at them and say, like, I'm here because of you guys. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. And and I, having that understanding, and I realized, then I realized, you know what, whatever we can help, we, we think sometimes it's nothing, but someone is dying for that. You know, someone is willing for that, you know, what we have. And I realized, oh, I think I can help some people in changing their life, you know, and to save their life, and this is my service. Then I said, then I start working a lot, and a lot, lot now. And you know, like now I'm, I uh, think taking the first war blind Everest next year. That's project going on, and the yeah, um, another double amputee, Justin. We're working on the project, and the a uh, lot of Parkinson disease, and you know all the PTSD, mental health. It's just because what I realize is that the like I exact same reason. I think. I'm not a perfect, I'm not, you know, no no one better than that, but at least, you know, I know that I think I can give my time and my knowledge, then they can actually not, you know, they are thrive to, to, you know, to achieve their dream and also save life, you know, by giving opportunity sometimes, like we say, we underestimate what we have, but someone is, you know, someone will dying for that. When are you at your happiest? I think my happiest moment is that uh, when I'm uh, silent, and you know when I'm in in diving, you know I do every day. You know every day is like start day with the um, a lot of people call meditation or the thing, but realizing you know connecting uh, beyond ourselves. You know sit down and just close your eyes and just listening whatever play. Do you miss the old life? Not really, if I'm honest with you. Not really, I think. Uh, um, but again, you know, I had a great, you know, life, great career, you know, saw with the Gurkhas and SAS, not a single day of regrets. And great thing is I still had a really, really close friend from, you know, every part of Gurkhas, Nepal to the, you know, regiment. And that is, you know, I think that's a gift for me. Where do you go for the future, bro? From here? Yeah. What's your plans? Yeah, I think I always continue, uh, continue service my life, and to you know, like I say, I'm still massively involving with the uh, veteran PTSD mental health for the military side to service my brother, and also um, you know, uh, sharing my knowledge with you know, like you, you know, thank you for me giving this opportunity, and also doing a lot of retreat, mental health retreat uh, for the normal public, you know. They, they can just, a lot of people just come up and say like, oh, how to deal with death, you know, how to deal with the, you know, depression, anxiety. And I'm not expert, but, you know, I have gone through, I have been de- dealt through 
through the you know like my philosophy way the life of the buddhist monk or the warrior as as fighter you know i pretty much you know deal with myself and then i realize in life you know i think a lot of people don't have that experience and knowledge and they need to learn the story so that they can continue and achieve their life i think that's what you know that's what i continue i will be doing this for anybody that's watching that's maybe in a life of struggle just now male or female what advice would you have for them I think biggest advice for me is that the a uh, lot of thing uh, thought come in our mind. The thought is only to survive for this body. I think if we control our breath, fasting, and it, uh, we can control our mind because our mind need to survive. Without oxygen, the mind gonna collapse. That's why fasting is if you have control of our breath. Then slowly you can control over your mind. Then once the mind start control, you know, listen to you. That have a right purpose, you know, like think and meditate. You know, a lot of people just reactive and see something, hear something, they follow with that thought. But we don't. We often sit down and listen. Right, what I'm gonna be truly gonna achieve next year or tomorrow. Have a couple of minute with that thought. Spend time with that, then work for it. And what I what I say is that you know, like SAS mindset. Once you have the mind thoughtful, process and meditate, then work your ass off. You know, mm-hmm. if you have that attitude of mindful, and when you have something, you have good intention, nothing gonna stop. Just work for it day and night, and then you know, then your life will be different. What's the uh, social media links for people to maybe get in contact or ask you questions? How can people contact you? Yeah, uh, it's everything uh, everywhere is Warrior Monk and Instagram is Warrior Monk too too, and Facebook is also Instagram, LinkedIn. Everywhere is Warrior Monk. Would you like to finish up on anything else, brother? No, mate. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this yeah. great opportunity. And you know, I think uh, in modern day life, I think hopefully, you know, I think we I'm sharing story and maybe you know someone can learn and make their life better I guess yeah you've had so many great achievements in life I take my hat off to you brother Thanks. it's unbelievable what can be done and how you can overcome fears and problems and where you can go with it you're very spiritually connected and hopefully people can get a lot from this where they can maybe make their own changes and believe in themselves to then kick on and do anything they want in life but again thanks for your time wishing nothing but the best for the future brother cheers, cheers. thank you mate thank you thank you